if you look at this potentially, especially when you get into full self-driving and robo-taxi or robo, um, maybe robo cross-country, I would say, could this actually impede in on air travel? Because if you could get in a vehicle and just take a, you know, it's kind of like today we're using these big buses that are kind of hauling cross-country, but if you could do that in a much more comfortable vehicle uh, that is just taking you up to Atlanta, would you fly? I don't know if I would even look at flying to Atlanta from South Florida now, if I could go in full robo mode. Yeah, no, so I, I made a video probably more than a year ago now called 10 Industries That Elon Musk and Tesla Will Destroy. And here goes to my YouTube channel. Uh, it's called 10 Industries something. If you search my channel for 10 Industries, you'll find it. I think that Tesla, Robo, the combination of Tesla, Robo Taxi, Boring Company Tunnels, and SpaceX Earth to Earth, um, flights destroys yep. the entire commercial air travel market. Um, yep. I, th I actually think Hyperloop could have pl play a role in this too. If you want, I don't know if we've talked about boring bearing before, but um, so imagine the short haul trip. Like you're 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 not far from me, and let's say we want to go to Tampa. There are people who fly yeah. from South Florida to Tampa, which is about oh, yeah. a four hour. Yeah. It's about a four hour drive. Yeah. Well, now run a Boring Company tunnel under the Everglades, right? That mm -hmm. runs straight to somewhere between Orlando and Tampa and splits off when it gets close. And now you can, and it runs 150 miles an hour in the tunnel. And you, sure. hop, in a, you hop in a van that seats 20 people, it goes 150 miles an hour, and it's basically a one hour ride instead of a four hour drive. It gets you there faster than flying, and it costs sure. you a lot less money. Um, I've even, like, you probably have friends who like Disney, right? Disney World? Oh yeah. So, you know, there are people who will go up to Disney World and spend the weekend there and stay in a hotel. Well, what if you could ride in a what if you could ride in a bus that would drop you off right in down in Disney Springs, downtown yeah. Disney, right right outside the door to Disney, right? And it gets you there yeah. in an hour, gets you home in an hour. You might not bother getting a hotel. You know, it's twenty bucks Ooh. each way, right? What if it's ten yeah. or twenty bucks each way per person? You might decide the heck with it. I'm just gonna, you know, ride. You know, I'm gonna ride up there every day. You know, yeah. you know, I'll, you wouldn't bother staying in a hotel, which which could damage the hotel industry, but at the same time, it allows, I actually think one of the huge impacts of this going down the road is destinations become much bigger. Dis yeah. Disney will be able to expand dramatically because they're gonna have so much more demand because it will be cheaper for, cheaper for people to travel from farther. So, you know, right now there's people who live in say the villages about an hour from Disney or half hour from Disney and they drive over to Disney Springs and they hang out, right? Um, and there's people who get season passes and they go in Disney. Well. The season pass holder, you know, expands, you know, doubles the distance, which quadruples the number of people in that space. So I think it really boosts Disney. But I think, yeah, getting back to your point about air travel. So Hyperloop, if, if Boring Company builds long distance tunnels with supersonic uh, Hyperloop vehicles, then they're faster than trains, they're cheaper and they're safer and they don't they don't get affected by weather. Um, right. And you know, short haul travel from South Florida, Tampa, Tallahassee, Gainesville. If there's a tunnel that's going 150 miles an hour, are you going to bother flying on a plane? You know, Gainesville isn't yeah, really good for yeah. flying anyway. Tallahassee yeah. doesn't have good good flights anyway. Same scenario. Yeah. And then Atlanta, you know, that's Atlanta's far enough that you know the plane might still be an advantage, but you know. If you can do a hyperloop or a higher speed tunnel and you get up to two or three hundred miles an hour, hyperloop is supposed to be faster than the speed of sound. So that's going to be faster mm -hmm. than a plane. But um, in the long run, I think we're going to see hyperloop travel that's going to be faster. and It's going to entirely wipe out commercial aviation. And I don't know if you I don't know if you want to go into my theory about the Bering Strait, because that's a big thing. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it, this is looking at forecasting Tesla as a company. So let's talk about boring. I mean, obviously, that's part of it. So boring companies related. So how do you see this really making a dent on, uh, you know, traditional freight movement, et cetera? W where do you think that's going? Right. So this is the big idea. Imagine four tunnels running up the west coast of North America, up through Canada, Alaska, through the Bering Strait, down into Russia, okay. down into China. And then maybe a spur along the Arctic Circle to get over to Europe. But just focus on China and, and uh, North America for now, the west coast of North America. Four tunnels. Two tunnels carry shipping containers, which it's already on the Boring Company website, they can do it. And two tunnels carry Hyperloop. So yeah. you've basically replaced all Pacific container shipping and all Pacific air travel. The cost of building those four tunnels is about $100 billion. Pew. So, wow. and it's faster, it's cheaper, 
it's safer, and it's not affected by weather. Which, right? yeah, so that, that kills the shipping industry. And it's, and it's cleaner. <laughs> yes, it wipes it. So that's like kind of this interesting thing we talked a little bit earlier about would Tesla make electric ships? And yeah. I'm not sure whether there's a market for ships if you could do this hyperloop idea through this loop idea of these tunnels through the Bering Strait. You can't do them the other way. I shouldn't say you can't. It's much harder to do them the other way, going from Canada through Newfoundland, through Greenland, Iceland, over to the UK. The, mm -hmm. the spans of water you have to go under are much longer. With the Bering yeah. Strait, it's a fairly short span you'd have to go under. So I think this might be a way of just you're you're dramatically clean. You're cleaning the air. You're saving money. You're making it more efficient. You know, you think about when the when the ship arrives in the port. You've got to have a crane that's taking these containers off one at a time, putting them over here. You got to move them around. What if they're on? If they're in the loop, if they're in the tunnel, it's just the, the the shipping container knows where it's supposed to go, and when there's a stop, when there's a spot, it just it just hits off and goes where it's supposed to Off go. Loads. The yeah. the the potential for and and you know I want to be clear. Number one, this is potential for it wrecks commercial air travel, it wrecks shipping. Okay, fine. The potential for lowering the cost of transportation of people and goods and making lives better for people, right? Because our products now cost less, our products get to us quicker, our our travel is cheaper and faster and safer. This is a huge boon to humanity. And yeah, for sure. Yes, yes, it does wipe out commercial shipping. That's a shame because it's one of the most polluting industries on the planet. <laughs>